do, I'm going to be asking you questions. All right, I see one hand up. I see another hand. I see a third hand. I see a fourth hand. Amen. I need my time so that I'll be able to time um, these questions since we have so many. Please, if you hand me my, my phone. Amen. It looks like our questions is based on the fullness of the story. That is to say, we have learned so much and we need to ask some questions to help us. All right. First question, Sister Vera. Hallelujah. I want to bless God because submission is not only for the women, but for the men as well. No. Praise the Lord. As it is written in Ephesians in our text, chapter 5, verse 21, it says, Submit yourself one to another as in the fear of the Lord. My question is in verse 22 and in verse 24. Verse 22 says, Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. And verse 24 says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let every wife be to their own husband in everything. I will be glad, sir, if you throw more light into that verse 22 and 24. I know it is submission. Verse 22 says yeah, that you should submit as unto the Lord. Verse 24 says submit in everything. In everything. Even if you have to lie, submit. Even if you have to what? Please, can you clarify what you mean? Even if you have to lie. Submit. Who is the, who is the person lying? It says, submit to your own husband in everything. Even if he asks you to lie, submit. Oh. So that's why I need clarity. Okay. Train up. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I'm going to be answering the questions one by one. The reason is that in the process of asking, of answering one question, we might be able to solve the other questions or give the answer to other questions. If you give the microphone to Sister Vero, please. Um, I believe very strongly that our teacher did a thorough job and that he explained you can sit down for now. And that he explained these things, not only fully, but in the context of the search, the scriptures, and in the context of the word of God. Even making references to other passages in the Bible that are not directly in the search, the scriptures. If you followed very well, I believe that the our teacher emphasized that submission is for both husband and wife. Is that right? And that there must be mutual submission, first of all, before the wife submits as unto the Lord. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. And I want Sister Vero to please read verse 22 one more time Ephesians chapter 5 I read verse 22 start from verse 21 sorry verse 21 submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God verse 22 wives submit yourself unto your own husbands 
as unto the Lord. The verse 21 says, the last column, the last sentence is, in the fear of God. What does the fear of God mean? Because we read these things without focusing or meditating on those words. What does the fear of God mean? Can you tell me, ma'am? So that's why I ask the question so okay. that we can clarify it. The fear of God means to depart from evil. Okay. Please sit down. Thank you. Thank can you. anybody in the house tell me what the fear of God means? What does that passage mean in reference to the fear of God? What does the fear of God mean? Anybody raise up your hand. All right. Yes, uh, my brother. The fear of God means that you, you, you will not do anything against the commandments of God. Okay. Yes, uh, Brother Kiwun. It means that uh, it's not even what your husband is doing to you. Yeah, this thing is coming from God. Okay. That when you fear God, you have to do it. Okay. Because of our time. I want you to know this and to write it down in your Bible. Every place that the Bible says the fear of God, put in brackets, obedience to God. Obedience to God. Anywhere you find the Bible mentions the fear of God, it means obedience to God. And this is the confusion that a lot of people have, even when the Bible talks about holiness. Holiness means that I am willing to obey God, to do the will of God. When I have choices between my own idea or somebody's own idea about a situation and also the word of God about that situation, I choose the will of God. I choose obedience to the word of God. That is what holiness means. I want to do the will of God all the time. And we know that the will of God is beautiful. In fact, turn to, put your hand where we are and go to Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Verse 11. Can somebody read it for me? If you have the mic, can you read it for me? Psalm 19, verse 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant to war, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Okay. It starts from verse 7. If you want to read it comprehensively, you start from verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Now go down to verse 11. Moreover, by those laws, by them is thy servant warned. And in the keeping of those laws, in the keeping of the word of God, in the keeping of the commandment of God, there is great what? Reward. Amen. You know the reason why there is so much divorce in this country? is because of disobedience to the commandment of the Lord. Therefore, there's no reward. That is why they have pain. That is why from generation to generation, their children have pain. Because they copy what their parents do. In, dis in disobedience to the word of God. That is why they have sorrow. That is why they have calamity. The Bible says if we obey the law of God, there is a great reward, a blessed reward, a joyful reward. And these things that we are teaching is not for unbelievers. 
It is unbelievers that argue with the word of God. When you are a child of God and you are genuinely born of God, you desire, you are eager, you are anxious to do the will of God. You want to obey God. Not as your parents obey God, but as Christ has instructed you to obey God. Not as your colleagues on your job obey God. Not as your teacher, your professor obey God. Not as your boss obey God. But as the word of God in Christ Jesus have instructed you to obey God. So you are not submitting to your wife or submitting to your husband relative to the worldly knowledge. You are submitting in obedience to the word of God. Now, you say, well, I submit to my husband, but my husband, even though we come to the same church and he claims to be born again, is treating me like this and like that. Listen, your reward is not from your husband. Your reward is not from your wife. Your reward is from who? It's from God. And he is watching. You know the, 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 the unfortunate things about our lives is that we think God is only watching us when we are in church. But it's not with us when we are at work. It's not it with us when we are at school. It's not with us when we are driving. It's not with us in other areas. Let me tell you something. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all with you everywhere and at any time and at every time. Amen? Amen. And because of that, you are not mean to your husband or mean to your wife outside the church. You don't treat her or treat him anyhow outside the church. And when you come to the church, you reverence him or her. Don't let us repeat the failures of the society or the lives of people that have divorced and remarried and divorced and remarried and divorced and remarried, and divorced and remarried because they cannot obey this word. There are some people that have had bad marriages before they became born again. When they became born again, they correct everything. Because now they have Christ within them. And the mistake they made when they were not children of God should not repeat itself after they become children of God. Did I hear a big amen? Amen. And the scripture tells us that by submitting one to another, we, might, we will be able to win the other person. We'll be able to live a life that will win the other person to the kingdom of God. Did I hear a big amen? amen? So our life must reflect Christ. Everything we do in Christendom is for the glory and the honor of God. Amen. Sister Beru, did I answer your question? Yes, but you are not satisfied. Amen. Okay, sir, which means if I'm to tell lies or to do bad things, I shouldn't submit. Well, as a child of God, I shouldn't even be answering that. You know why? As a child of God, God will not agree with you to submit to lies. If you were sleeping and you told your children to please tell visitors that come, that you are not at home. Is that Christ-like? No. So if your husband tells you to tell lie because you have to submit to him, is that Christ-like? No. Amen? Christ will not ask you to do that. So you tell your husband, I'm sorry, I'm submitting to you, but I cannot tell lie because I am a child of God. Do you understand it now? Thank you, sir. So you cannot lie 
to please your husband. Because the first husband that you have is who? Is who? No, I didn't hear you on the microphone. Christ Jesus. Okay, that's your first husband. And to him, you obey. The second husband, which is the one you marry in this world, cannot overrule your first husband. Praise the Lord. Second question. Second question. Yes, ma'am. I thought maybe I asked a big question. That's why I was okay. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Can you read verse 17? 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I'm sorry. Second Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Okay, so old old culture are passed away. Old manner of living are passed away. Old things that we see around us are what? Why? It's a new creature. Is that right? So, when you become a child of God, culture does not come in because you now have a heavenly culture. Amen? It is in our culture to curse. It is in our culture to abuse. It is in our culture to play diplomacy. It is in our culture to lie. This is our culture, period, to sin. But when you have Christ, for as many as receive him, he gave the power to become what? Sons of God, children of God, daughters of God. He is our father now. So we don't have anything to do with this worldly culture. A lot of people mix that up. And they say, well, my father told me to do this. But who do you have before you have your earthly father? You have the heavenly father as a new creature. So just like I answer Sister Vero, your first father, when you are a child of God, is who? Is God. And Christ purchased you and brought you to the father. So you obey your heavenly father above your earthly father. You obey your heavenly mother above your earthly mother. You obey, you obey heavenly word above earthly word. Amen? Therefore, there is no room 
for us now to say, well, you know, this is our culture and this is what we do in our culture. In fact, anything that contradicts the word of God as a child of God has no place in that child of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. All right? Please be seated because I don't want to keep, to keep you standing. Now, the Pharisees had the same problem that we had. They had a cultural problem. They had a religious problem. And they were not shy in bringing it before Jesus. Look at Matthew chapter 19. So Matthew's Gospel chapter 19. In verse 2, I need to emphasize verse 2 before I go to verse 3. And great multitude followed him, and he healed them there. In the presence of the great multitude, the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, wanting to ridicule Jesus, wanting to prove to Jesus that he does not know what he's saying, and saying unto him, In our culture, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause, because that is our culture. In those days, the boss is so elementary. If the wife burn the food, it's ready for the, for the boss. If the wife did not honor or respect the husband in the presence of all the great men that are around, She's ready for the work. For every cause. There were so many reasons. Verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? So Jesus Christ said, Now, you are the Pharisees. That's why he referred to the religious things that they knew. You are Pharisees. You're supposed to know the Bible. Okay, if you know the Bible, have you not read it in your Bible or in your Torah? That which, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. I was very happy when our teacher said, God did not make what? Eve and made what? Steve. Is that not so? How many of you heard that? How many of you heard that? Raise up your hand. Okay, our teacher said that God did not make the steel and made what? Eve. He also said God did not make Deborah, and I wanted to say that He did not also make Delilah. But when He made Deborah, He made a David. Amen. All right. So Jesus Christ said God made them male and female. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be what? One flesh. Therefore, there are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put what? Asunder. Your question is, is it only male man that will live and cleave? Yes, it's only man that will live and cleave. Why? At creation, God did not make the man, sorry, the woman before the man. He made the man and then he made who? The woman. And God did not bring the man to the woman he created. What did God do? He brought the woman to the man. So the man is the one to take over and carry the woman to the new home that they are now building. So the man is the one that is the head, is the one that is the, the, the responsible one in the home. That is why most of all the duties that you find even in scripture, it's focused on man. It's not focused on the woman. It's focused on man. Why? 
It is the men that is difficult to love their wives. It is the men that think love is smesmen. If I will use the language of my granddaughter. Amen? I don't like all this smesmen stuff. That's a language. Men think that if I show love, I am weak. If I show love, I am a sissy. If I show love, I will, you know, my, my, my other fellow men will ridicule me. Can I tell you, men, you are an example as, a, as children of God to portray what Christ wants us to live in our society. The society is not the one to dictate to us. We are the one to dictate to the society. Therefore, we show the society what Christ's love is supposed to be. Um, we learned that in those days, the Romans, when they wake up in the morning, the first thing they say in the morning is, Lord, even though they do not know that God, but they say, God, I thank you because you did not make me a woman. I thank you because you did not make me a Jew. And I also thank you because you did not make me a slave. Why do they pray that prayer? They think women are second-rated human beings. In fact, what they do, what the Romans do in those days is that they put women only in charge of their property as custodians, as the security for their property. So they regard her as one of their properties. That's what it means. But this is why the Christian wife when Christianity came in and, and they started to live the life that Christ has taught, it was a challenge to the Romans. Why must men who call themselves Christian behave like this to their wife, love their wife, be kind to their wife, be tender to their wife, look at their wife as joint ears? It was a challenge, but God actually meant it to be a challenge to teach them the word of God. We will be good examples in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are men, we are being challenged to show love and respect and submission to our own wives. It does not make you a smesne man. Amen. It does not make you a weakling. It makes you strong because you are receiving reward for obedience to God. And those of you who have been practicing this kind of submission, you have seen that it has rewarded you greatly because you are in obedience and in compliance to the word of God. Praise the Lord. Sister Adi, did I answer your question fully? Praise the Lord. Next question. Next question. Yes, ma'am. Rising. Yes, sir. So that it will be a way to 
for many of our marriages to grow, to develop, and to be established. First of all, you have been missing couples seminar. You and your wife never came to any marriage seminar. So my brother, I am sorry to say that it is not the church, it is you. Because we have couple seminars where we gather together and we discuss intimate relationship as it affects the church of Jesus Christ. Amen? Did I hear a big amen? Did I hear a big amen? From Brother Isaac, did I hear a big amen? I want you to say after me. Please give him the microphone. From now on, my wife and I will never miss any couple seminar. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 12. First Timothy chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 12. Actually, why don't you read it for me? Rising. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Amen. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. That is the requirement of God for us as his children. We are to be the template. We are to be the showcase of Christ's life living. Number one, to believers. Because as we are together in, in a church or in a congregation, other people are watching how we treat our wives. We are in deep conversation with somebody else and your wife has an emergency that cannot do it and bulges in that discussion. How do you answer her in the heat of that emergency? You did not know that she has an emergency and she just interrupted you. Do you shun her and other says, ha ha, bro? You just shun your wife in our presence. They won't say it loud, but that is what they are saying in their heart. Or your wife has been calling you and calling you, and you just say in passing to the people around, please let me answer this, whatever name you call the wife, before she does whatever to you. And people heard it. Or are you so gentle as to say, oh, my honeymoon is calling me, whatever, sugar pie, name you call your wife. Please, I need to suspend this discussion. I need to answer her. And they see the calmness. Even though your, your phone has been ringing, 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 and they know that it's the same person that has been calling you, and you are calm and saying, yes, my dear, what can I do? What is going on? And it can't be you answer. It may, it, this shows up in every, in, in, in most cases. I mean, you are you are having little children, and that little child is uh, just boo boo on your lap, and you wore your best suit. How do you take that child and snatch it to the mother and say, "Carry your daughter, carry your son. Look at my dress." Praise the Lord. Those are things that people watch. Those are things that makes us children of God. Because it is not just sitting down gently 
and doing things gently, it is when things happen and our reaction to it. That's why the Bible says, do not let anybody shun, despise your youth, but be an example of believers in word, in conversation, that is in the manner of living, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. God will make us true example of God, of Christ, of the Holy Spirit, everywhere we go in Jesus' name. I had answered the first part of your question, that we are not of this world, and our manner of living is not according to this world. So we don't listen to what the world says. We listen to what Christ says. Now, if you have, and I know you do not have, but if you have an unbelieving wife, or your wife has an unbelieving husband, and is, and is doing something opposite, the Bible says, by your manner of living, in that Ephesians chapter 5, you'll be able to win that person to Christ. It may not happen the first day, the second day, it may not even happen the first year, the second year, but God knows what he's saying, because this Bible are ye and amen. Many, many, many couples who do not have, who are not on the same standing as far as their relationship with Christ is concerned, have experienced their husband coming to the Lord, their wives coming to the Lord. Even saying to them, why you are not coming back to this house? Go to your Bible study. Go and marry your pastor. Go and marry, you know, wherever you go to meet in, you know, every Tuesday or every Monday for Bible study. You are not coming to this house. And some even husbands that are um, that are not Christians have actually taken cane, literal cane, and beat up their wives. But because of the Christ-like life and the Christ-centered life of that woman, that woman, that man became genuinely born again, regretted what they have done, and they are living as beautiful homes, in beautiful homes today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sister, did I answer your question, sir? Go ahead. Give him the man. Give him the man. He has something to say. The church is inviting you to, to couples program. All right, Sister uh, Stella. Oh, I've answered your question. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Yes, is there anybody else at the back? Yes, I have a question, sir. Okay. It's in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Yes, sir. Now, first of all, before I ask this question, I just want to say that the only family as believers that we have is the church. Yeah. So if we are going to get anything, it has to come from the church. In Ephesians chapter 5, uh, I noticed that from verse 18, from verse 18, so verse 21, there is no full stop from verse 18 until verse 21. And 21 says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And then verse 22 is a different beginning of another statement when it says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. My question is, is there a difference between the submission of verse 21 and verse 22? Praise the Lord. My question to you is, can you define to me what submission means? Submission is yieldedness. Uh, it has to do with the respect of uh, in a lower level, the respect of authority. Authority in the sense that, okay, this is my teacher. When he's teaching, I have to subject and 
listen and not distracting and not make noise. Uh, also in the family setup, and then the first submission among believers, from my little understanding of asking the question, is the general submission of members of the church one to another. But specifically in the family, in the family, the issue of, so I'm married, so I'm talking from experience, and I've also seen people that are married. In the family, the issue of submission of the wife plays a central role in the home, just as the love of the husband for the wives plays a fundamental central role in the home. And oftentimes, our people always miss it. Like when Sister Mero asked the question, that's why they first jump to it. Oh, the Bible says submitting one to another. Yes, but in the home, go reject it again. There's a full stop after that submission. And the other statement, when you begin to address the family, they begin to talk to the family, say, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. Not as a slave, we understand. But until we properly understand that, Thank God you are here today. I'm so grateful to God. And you made the statement that the fear of God means obedience to God. It's when we pick it up, is it when we pick it up and do it as obedience to God? That's that's the what I'm trying to know. Whether that's what it means, because it appears to me there is a difference between the submission of the general church that is mentioned there and the unsubmission in the whole. Thank you. Uh, I, you have answered your own question. Look at verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking, he continues by saying, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now, Right, there is no difference because there is sorry, there is no difference between the submission of the members of the church one to another from the submission of the wife to the husband. Because it says here that that submission, it says, submitting yourselves one to another in the, in the fear of the Lord. And it says, why submit yourselves unto your own husband as what? As unto the Lord. The reason why we submit one to another in the church is as unto the Lord. However, the scripture God wants to emphasize that that submission is not only limited to one another in the church, but is much more powerful when we do it unto one another in the home. What does submission actually means? It means respect for one another. It means being able to say, Honey, you are right. Do you know that it is not all the time that men are right? Is that right? Did I hear amen? Amen. From the whole church? Amen. Is that amen? Amen. Is it every time that men are right? No. There are times when men are wrong. And the ability, the humility to be able to say, guess what? I am wrong and I am sorry, brings the wife to understand this, my husband, is submissive to Christ. It's not for man to be wrong and yet argue and try to prove that they are right. They can never be wrong. 
and they must be right all the time, even when it is obvious that they are that they are wrong. Children of God don't argue. Children of God are submissive to Christ, and once they see something in the Scripture that that they have been doing that is wrong, because the Scriptures is for what? Is for our for our learning, for doctrine, for instruction, for correction. Second Timothy, that the man of God may become what? Perfect unto every good works. So we submit to God and to Christ. And whenever the word of God instructs us, we are willing to say, this word of God takes freest precedence over my own idea. What I, what I have dis discovered, and I want to ask all of you here, how many of you read and prepared your search the scripture before you came to church this morning? Please raise up your hand. If you read and prepared your search the scriptures, praise the Lord. Amen. So I have only four people. Please put down your hand. The reason I ask you is this. If you do not prepare your search, you can sit down, brother. If you do not prepare your search the scriptures before you come, you will not fully get the juice, the best, out of your search the scriptures when the teacher comes to teach us. Honestly, our teacher did a great work in the search of scripture this morning. And we should not even have any doubt at all as to what and what and what the word of God says. Because these words of God are supposed to be plain and direct and full. I pray that the benefits of the word of God will be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. We've spent so much trying to answer a question. You still have one more question? Yes, sir. Okay. Verse 25. That says, husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So if we read it further, we get the answer that we are looking for. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We must understand the word of God is, look at verse 26. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The Lord will make our lives beautiful in Jesus' name. Amen. The focus, according to our teacher this morning, of all this is to prepare us for heaven. We'll be ready for heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. The focus of Christ admonishing us or instructing us to obey him in this area is that one of these days, there will be no spot or blemish in our lives as we enter the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and pray. One thing that I want us to pray, one prayer that I want us to pray this morning is if you are married here, you need to open your mouth and just thank the Lord for your husband and thank the Lord for your wife. You need to appreciate God for that man, appreciate God for that woman. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Father Lord, I thank you for my husband. I thank you for my wife. I thank you because of all that you have done in our home. Pray for one another. Ask the Lord to reveal anything that needs to be rebuilt that you have learned this morning. Ask the Lord to make new anything that needs to be new 
that I have heard this morning, ask the Lord to establish your home as it ought to be, so that our life will be an example of believers to the world and to the believers in our generation. That even if people do not want to come to church, even if people do not want to obey Christ, they will see in our lives that we are obedient children of God, doing the will of God, preparing ourselves for home above eternity with God. That we may be called children of the Most High by the life that we live in the home. And we may be examples to our children of what Christ expects from our home. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you for giving us husbands and for giving us wives. For giving us children of God who are willing to obey, walk, and serve in humility before you all the days of our lives. We are thankful that you have given us a spouse to show us the Christ-like life. We are asking you that in the name of Jesus, where we have fallen short today, build us back Bring us back. Renew us to yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. We are asking you, Lord, that when we have husbands or wives that are not born again, that we that have Christ in us will live such a life that we will win our husband, will win our wives to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, you have called us to be example not only of believers, but example of unbelievers around us. You've called us also to be a mentor to our children as they watch us live in the home. So that Lord God Almighty, they will desire their own marriage to be Christ-like. I pray that our children will be genuinely born again and walk in your laws, in your status, and in your commandments in Jesus' name. I pray that we will be a true example to them that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our posterity until Jesus comes will be the Christ life, life, and a line that shows what heaven is like here on earth in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you answered our prayers. Be thou exalted, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church of God shout. Amen.